I like this one. Now I want a different chair. Look at that. I'm looking at we're in Tarjay. I'm getting some stuff for traveling. I got some compression socks. You know, I'm old. So, these are what they got in Tarjay. This is for camping. I think I got enough camp stuff for this year. Going camping. Like, more cabin camping. Not real camping. But, you know, I guess close enough. Oh, my gosh. It must fell. I want to get st <coughs> stickers. Because stickers we have for our new suitcases. Newer suitcases. They're not sticking. So, yeah, that's not good. So I'm outside of City Hall in New York City. And as the young people say, oh, first of all, before I say that, it's a girl case hit. Hey kids, how y'all doing? This is your local advocate in New York City. Fighting for your rights. <laughs> your children's rights. Fighting for your family's rights. That's what I do almost all day. Almost every day. <laughs> that's what I do. So um, that's what I'm checking out right now. We are in Manhattan. I'm putting City Hall because depending on where I'm at, I just took City Hall to see which trains are better, which one's faster. Hopefully, I won't get knocked up in the, the traffic. I gotta pee. Um, you know. But I don't know what time they're gonna let us in. It starts at 9 o'clock. I don't know what time they want us to set up and stuff like that. But we're gonna be, I'm gonna be on the steps of City Hall talking my stuff about shelter based coordinators. So I'm gonna make sure I talk slow, articulate. As my girl said yesterday, black girl magic. So we took off my trip nail polish. <laughs> Cause I definitely was, I was thinking, I was like, mm. so I want to do it, I'm not sure. Let's see what happens. But I'm going to ask them what time they want us to go in. I'm not really sure. And we're checking that out. Let's be on the steps to see you all today. So let's see what happens. There's a lot happening today. <laughs> So I am in here after I did my thing. I don't think I did a great job. And I'm the only person who really spoke on that subject for the shelter based coordinators. You know, you could be in shelter, but now she's doing better in life. So, yes. But right now, I'm in City Hall. So, they're going to be doing the budget hearing. My first time doing this in person. Usually, I'm on Zoom. It's from 10, I think 10 30. They didn't even start yet. I don't think they ever start on time, never start on time until 2 30 and then we just start doing our testimonies after. The problem is I have to get KK at 5 so I'm going to have to leave and come back <laughs> if all else fails. I'm going to try to go in the beginning because you know we will get about two minutes each not about we get about two minutes to talk and I got to talk as fast as possible but as clear as possible and as concise as possible so take your girl out. I feel like I got a cue today. I'm just like check your girl out <laughs> but yeah i'm excited as always um to do my part i hope you're doing your part sorry guys i made a video about um what you can do to testify and things like that so hopefully if you guys could come in person to meet me or you could see it on zoom and then you could check me out there and just do your part guys especially if you live in new york city bye this is my second time seeing you here look at here yeah, i usually see me in the office with the cow office when i go for my meetings but we're in the regular office regular schmegler looks old <laughs> as it does but yeah operation And thank you for the information. Although I, I don't know what would happen, I would just say, looking at all of these, you know, backpack school supply program, bilingual education, preschool education, school lunches, right? We're talking about all of these safety net supports for families, for immigrant families, for working families in our. Community. How many children to enroll in schools closer to the shelter? How is DOE helping students from transport from shelter to school? Is ride share still in use? Mm. So, in terms of the number of students directly impacted by the 60-day rule, we'll have the best data on that once we fully operationalize the MOU that was previously mentioned, because then we can ensure we can share data about individual students between New York City Public Schools, the Herbs, NISM, et cetera. What we are seeing so far, based on our estimates, is that it's a fairly low number of students who are moving shelters and schools. There are students moving schools, there's students leaving the system, but the actual percentage of students um, moving shelters in schools is fairly low so far. From our estimates, we don't have the actual data. And you'll be able to give me some concrete data, right? 
Once we fully operationalize the data sharing is when we'll really know who's received the 60 day notice and ensure we can um, tell where they're where they're coming. Um, it's reported that his son Scott who worked at so we are on our break. This is five minutes. This is more than five minutes. They put all those nice chairs in the back, and they have us sitting on this, these horrible chairs for hours. I've been in here since 10-something. I went to the bathroom like around 10, 11. I was outside for the press conference, <coughs> the rally, whatever. I came up here and went to the bathroom, sat down. I went to the bathroom twice. I don't think you care. But it's like, you have us on these chairs. Like, what, what, what? I'm a taxpayer, so I'm confused on why I got these lega lega chairs. And like, bro, the first time doing one in person, I usually do it on Zoom, so I'm excited. Like, yes. So, let's go. I look cute. Look at that. Look at that. I can't really see the fit, but. Bye, <laughs> guys. Because the budget it lasted all day. I have to go to KK now, so. Yeah, so, guys. So, I'm on the train. I'm going to KK school. Yes. Next stop is City Hall. KK was sleeping all day in school. Not being her best. Her best person. But anyway, I'm literally going in to speak for three minutes because they said two minutes. Apparently, it's three minutes I get to talk, so. But yeah. Welcome under the parents. Parents. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. It is, I think, 7.30 because my alarm went off. This is when I have my church thing. I put everything on alarm, so I think these are the only alarm. Oh my god, I must drop. 7 07. And I'm just leaving. No, 7.37 and I'm just leaving. It's crazy, KK's sleeping her life away. Okay, can you see the steps? Okay, the steps are weird here. Let me show y'all the steps. This is not conducive. I'm done. I'm waiting for you so you don't drop down the steps. Look at these steps, this is not for people with eye impairments. I'm going faster than you, no, I can't see the steps. You behind me, sis. It's just weird. And the crazy thing is the ones outside, it just repaired them and they didn't make them well, like, what the hell? Headline at night. Well, it looks, look, let me see over there. Look at it all. And look at us go. Go with the flow. Let's go back on the train. You cool? Mm-hmm. 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 We could literally come out at 7 o'clock at night would have been on time. Yeah. It was the on timeness for me. It was the cold. It's kind of chilly out here. Look at up there. Yes, I guess it's a financial district, I believe. But yes, sir. Trip's coming up. And we need some bathing suits. It's a work trip, but we still have a pool there. We never get to go to the pool, so... Well, I don't know what hotel we're going to this time, KK. Maybe a different hotel. Uh, let's see what happens. So now I'm at my job. I feel like I went in person last week, Thursday. Went in person this Tuesday. I don't usually go in person this much for my job because I have different job now is like picking up. Um, but I'm happy and grateful because I like the opportunities. But I just, I think what it is, I'm not used to going to work back to back and doing stuff in the daytime when I'm taking a nap. It's like, it making you look, I'm still like on the pandemic thing, you know, tired, sleepy. Which I slept enough in pandemic, so it's like, why well, I wouldn't sleep more? I'm getting my hair done this <coughs> wash and set this Thursday. And then what else I'm gonna do? And then after probably three weeks or so, I'm gonna get braids. Gonna be going on a work trip, and they have a pool there. So, you know, I didn't go to pool in New Orleans because my hotel pool apparently is closed. Maybe I should ask. I think I'm gonna ask one of my bosses if the hotel, if the pool's open, because the other hotel, the pool was outside. That's why it was closed, and it's not summer yet, not even spring. So. This hotel, their hotel's inside, and they have a sauna. If I'm going to that same hotel, if I'm going to that same hotel for sure, for sure. I need to go to the sauna this time. I'm trying to go earlier to get all the amenities. Amenities. I'm gonna be leaving exactly that night <laughs> after everything. I want to get the amenities. You feel me? So, um, but yeah, that's what's going on tonight. So, yeah. Bye. So now we're at a uh, welfare city for staying today. It's been a long day, so that's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, it didn't start yet. I'm early. I'm usually early. I try to be early as much as I can. Stuff in the morning time is going to be a struggle. Unless I'm just taking Kiki to school because she just makes everything elongated for no reason. Um, but, yeah. Cool. All right now, but I'm tired. I'm trying to take a nap, and Kiki just allowed me to take a nap. She's, she does a lot. 
but yeah so I am back in Burlington I'm always looking for stuff this is probably the problem my shopping habit that I have shopping shopping addiction um but I really came here to look for stuff in my suitcase like stickers so I can make sure I identify it that's also always so many but I'm here nevertheless so yeah <laughs> I'm a mess. KK wants like acrylic containers also to part. Oh my girl, we need acrylic containers. But um, she wants to redesign her room. I feel bad for her because there's just no space to do all that in her our apartment. So I guess we could do it in small spaces, but we have so much crap. Like we literally have so much crap. And she don't take care of nothing. So it's like to buy these things and she actually doesn't take care of it doesn't make no sense either. So yeah. What is this? Oh. Yeah. But I think it's also good. I have acrylic things in my room. She wants to have them like, girl, you don't take care of nothing. Well, what? I've never seen this before. Oh, it's just a holder. You just put it in there and it just kind of stays. Oh. Okay. Look at this. Look at game. I'm over here drying like she grown. She not grown. I'm sorry for my finger guys, but she over there again about to get her hair braided. So that's her life. Living her best life. Like Detective Skinner was saying, it's on their social media, so it's in your house already. Of course, you, you keep your eye on your kids at the playground, but that's that's not, as far as human trafficking goes, that's not where the danger is. Um, our kids today, I'm a father as well, in some ways they have more freedom than we ever could have imagined. Um, they've got cash out. They've got pre-teens with cash out. I don't have cash out. <laughs> the scam app. They've got cash out. Um, they've got social media. They're communicating with adults from across the city or the country. And it, people can be sending them money. And the only way, unless you're in your kid's social media all the time, which is fine, that's great. The only way that you're really going to, to be able to catch something nefarious like this happening is to be observant and to communicate and so if you see that your kids behavior has changed if they become withdrawn if they're angry for some reason and you guys don't know why it might not be human trafficking it could be some other sort of a problem that probably the gang squad is going to address or a special victim is going to address but the general theme here tonight is to be aware to be observant as a parent or a family member or a guardian and, and to communicate openly with your kids. Um, noticing things, we had a case. You can literally have a kid leave school and be in the company of a trafficker or an exploiter or an abuser for as long as they ought to be at practice or after school or at their friend's house where they told you they were going and then they come home for dinner. It, it can happen after school, before school, it can happen while they're supposed to be at school, but they're not. I don't mean to scare everybody. Um, it, it really, it's just like any other danger that faces our kids in the modern world, um, that we just have to be observant, we have to communicate, and you know, if you see something, say something. That's the last point that I was gonna make, because it's not just enough to notice the behavior, you guys have your own jobs and your own lives and you're busy and may, you're not experts because it's not your job. Um, we, we take any and all hunches. If you think that you see something and you think that there are red flags, do not be afraid. There are anonymous hotlines that you can call. You can go to the website for the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. You can call Crime Stoppers. Any number of ways. Uh, you can call just 911. It will get to us through the Special Victims Division. It will get to the Human Trafficking Squad, and we are more than happy to go out. And look, a lot of times it turns out that there actually is a human trafficking going on. Maybe there was nothing, false alarm, that's great. Um, maybe it wasn't human trafficking, but there's some other sort of 